Hi everyone, I'm here in conversation today with Joey Chan, who is a fellow photographer from Melbourne and also started the community Our Stories on Film, which is uh, both on Discord and Instagram, if I've got that correct. But yeah, thanks for joining me today, Joey. How are you? Thanks for having me. Really well, thanks. So uh, How are just, you? I'm really great. Yeah, thanks. I'm really um, looking forward to hearing more about uh, your work and, and Our Stories on Film. But just to start off, for anyone who isn't familiar with your work, uh, what I have seen of it is that it includes a lot of, but not limited to, uh, photos of people for one, but definitely a focus on people with a lot of portraits and particularly their stories. And I'm sure that's part of, you know, where the, the naming must have come from for both your Instagram and the, the community. Whether that's done through the captions or just how you photograph people, I think that's something that definitely comes through that I notice and it could just be the the way they're shot but what i wanted to kind of start with was that sometimes it's fun to just take portraits for the for the fun of it for the sake of it but i think personally that it is really great to go, go a little bit deeper and to see a little bit more of the person's story and something about them and that connection between them and the photographer so could you just tell us first of all a little bit about that importance to you and uh how you go about it with uh telling someone's story through photography yeah, I thanks for <laughs> such a kind review of the work. Um, I guess I've always been fascinated with people and just really curious about the way people think, how they feel, why why they're driven to do anything. And when I think about photography, I that's what I kind of think about when I um, am planning like a shoot with someone. Um, because I guess anyone can be a photographer in the sense like we've all got phones, we, we can all take a photo, um, whether or not it's good and what determines um, quality. I think about, you know, how to make a photograph in the way that I can communicate how someone is or a little bit more about them beyond, you know, uh, what they look like. Um, so I, it's yeah, it's probably the thought process, and I'm I'm so glad to hear that that comes through in some of the photographs. So, um, yeah, no, that's really great to hear. Definitely, that that's showing through. It's yeah. intentional. Yeah, yeah, because a lot yeah. of work seems, especially when it comes to portraiture these days, something like editorial or a lot of fashion shoots seem more uh, driven by aesthetics or something. Whereas, I do notice that you it almost seems like you have made a connection with with some of the people you photographed and you go into the effort of writing something about it in the caption so it's almost like a joint appreciation through both the photo and the caption do you actually tend to either make friends with some of the people you photographed or have some prior connection with them or do you just kind of come about them through the way you would regularly meet people out and about so i typically for the people that i met um, either through friends of friends or if I'm at a gig, for example, and I notice someone, maybe I meet a DJ or someone there, I would, you know, if, if, if there's something that I'm curious about, uh, I don't know, it's more of a feeling though. I think it's more of a sense of feeling of like me, someone, I, I, I think I'm drawn to maybe that curiosity about something could be, you know, either why they like a particular genre of music or um culturally you know where they're from um how they ended up you know being in melbourne for example is you know i like the the diversity i think it's that connection organically as opposed to you know just sending people a direct message and I, yeah. like I, that's probably something i haven't really done much of um because there are really interesting people and and, and i think my my portraiture in the last year has been focused around um, telling stories of other creatives. So um, my friend Gina Sterling, who's a burlesque dancer, she's, I've had a few shoots with her and just getting to know her over the past year and a bit, um, her journey and like she's just taken off with, with her um, career in burlesque and now she's doing that full time um, to musicians, DJs, uh, illustrators. And I love hearing, just asking them, you know, how do they even, how do they find their art or medium 
Um, where do they find inspiration? So I like to have those conversations either in preparation for the shoot. I also um, like them to have their input as well. Um, I'm not someone that just says, this is my vision. I want to be like this. Can you, you know, can you fit me? And I, I and that's, there's no wrong way about it. Um, I know people have, as photographers have a certain um, style or vision in mind and they want that, that scouting people to fit that vision. I've probably done it um, another way, which is just more like feeling that connection with someone, getting to know them a little bit before um, taking their photograph. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like you're coming in with a, a, a pre a thought out concept like a lot of people do a concept shoot it's more i think yeah. it's at least i gather from what you're saying is that you're definitely a people oriented person and that that's what is mainly drawing you into the the process yeah. of, of making portraits it's yeah. what i think that collaborative approach um and i also find that doing it that way i feel like people my subjects kind of feel like it's theirs as well and I, I hope that they can see themselves through what I've shot and feel like I've represented them correctly or, or you know shown them in a way that um is true to who they are so that's in my always in the back of my mind yeah I'm, I'm sure it does come through and I will have been showing the audience a bit of your uh, work on Instagram, including hopefully I'll try and get some of those captions in, which is something I mentioned earlier. And I think it's a great touch to kind of uh, add on to the the portraiture, which is great, mind you. And one of the more recent ones, I think it was a family member you posted, uh, like an older family member, and it had like yeah. a great story behind it. And I think that's um, what kind of cued my reaching out to you because I've shared on Pushing Film on the Instagram page. And then I thought, you know, that's really great. And I'd already been seeing your work for a while, but yeah, I'm sure more people will hopefully check it out. And uh, what I wanna move on to a little bit is just the importance of of shooting on film because obviously a lot of us watching are probably interested in film, but <laughs> what is the uh, importance of the you know film to your process? And do you think yeah. it would still be the same if you were shooting it on digital, which um, you know to me, it seems like it would because the message is the main thing of importance, but does film really supplement that? Is it essential to it? Yeah, absolutely. I think film, I, I found film maybe about over 10 years ago, maybe about 12 years ago. And I have been quite a perfectionist growing up um, culturally. Like I think that expectation um, put on myself. I've yeah, kind of always felt the need to perfect things. And when I, even with film, I really wanted to get things right and stuff. But then they got to a point that it, it taught me how to just like let go of control a little bit and just slow down. I mean, it's probably very cliche. I think everyone that shoots film probably does that. But uh, really letting go of that, you know, perfectionism um, and control and slowing down uh, has really helped the process and. Yeah, obviously the aesthetic as well has has been something that is harder to achieve in digital because I'm not a good editor. Uh, I always question, like, you know, I've shot digital for a bit, like some family shoots a couple of years back, and um, and I would I would be editing so many different styles. I could never get it consistent, um, and it was just very frustrating. Whereas I feel like I've decided to just, you know, now I think 90% of what I do is film that I've, I've started to build that consistency. Um, and I know like, you know, I've picked film stocks. I, I, I have a better understanding of the differences between stocks and, you know, just, just learnt through, you know, 10 years of trial and error. Yeah. So, and yeah, that kind of adds to the process. It's also a bit of calmness in my mind as well oh. yeah absolutely yeah I, I agree and uh as for as for your background you mentioned you know 10 years with, with just with film does your photography background go back even further than that how did you initially start with photography 
Yeah, so I initially really wanted to study photography or, or some kind of um, arts related degree but you know I ended up choosing law and um, you know I stuck with law for so long but you know during uni I would always like put my hand up for those like um, uh, you know those student society events and you know I'll put my hand up to do the photography just with the DSLR um, and so I think during that process um, I think I just came across a film camera on eBay um, one day or came across actually no Lomography um, I don't know if you remember like maybe 10 or so years ago they had all the um, Holgers the Dianas and um, the LCA the little point and shoot like there was a whole big like cult following mm -hmm. with Lomography plastic cameras so I, I that brought me into looking at more vintage film cameras and I remember I think one of my first ones was um, a Nikon FM2 um and also a Yashica Electro 35 like a little range finder and uh, yeah just started experimenting from that point onwards yeah I think a lot of people actually did get into it through that that movement that you're talking about around then like you know 2010 ish onwards where before Instagram blew up and similar things there was uh I think Lomography had their website or just some kind of forum where you could yeah. go on and see what people were doing with these cameras and it kind of helped ignite this movement that we're still seeing the continuation of now which yeah. is great because one thing i love about this film community is exactly that the community aspect of it and how people are much more willing to to talk to each other and share and not make it you know too much about technicalities which sure there is a part of and uh we all love cameras i know i've seen you know one of your stories where you were heading somewhere with a, with about five cameras and you put up a poll like how many cameras and i think i guess like two or three and you said no it was like four or five but i think that's a good segue into your discord group and the instagram page both under the name of uh, our stories on film tell me and everyone a little bit about that and why you decided to start that yeah so our stories on film is a community of female and non-binary film photographers and I think it was like mid last year, I put a call out onto a Facebook film photography group. I was like, hey, looking for some, you know, female um, for upcoming shoots or collaborations, let's chat. And typically that group, I didn't notice many women um, post or share work or ask questions or even let it know comment. And when I posted that Facebook group, there was just, a flood of responses. I was like, oh, hey, there's actually a lot of us in here that probably don't say anything. Um, and, you know, I was just curious about it. So anyway, I, I messaged them and um, reached out. I'm like, hey, thanks for responding. You know, just, it was, it was actually just a, a broad call out. And because I think for me, I was just looking for people to shoot with or like um, be subjects of, you know, uh, portraits. Um, but as I reached out to them, um, overwhelmingly, a lot of them were telling me about, you know, the need for um, a group that is led by women um, or, or kind of a place where they didn't feel as intimidated um, to, to ask, you know, questions. Um, maybe it's just the perception and, and people are different experience levels. So it's, it's more the sense that a place that some people feel of uh, a sense of belonging in a predominantly male dominated uh, space usually yeah. um, I you know I don't think that's necessarily true in the sense like by numbers I feel like there are a lot of women that do shoot it's that they're just maybe not as um, vocal in the group or maybe you know they don't care too much about posting anything yeah um so yeah I was just kind of created this space so that you know let's just round people up it's there if you want to feel comfortable share with a different crowd of people um so it kind of just grew organically from there and people just started to jump on the discord and and share you know um their ideas and now we have this in new initiative that we're um in the process of doing which is doing a community zine um, and we're just, yeah, in in the early stages of building that at the moment. 
Awesome. Yeah, uh, I, I know you mentioned a little bit of that and I'm sure we'll circle around to it a little bit more, but uh, just going back to a little bit of what you said, I have kind of heard that repeated through either people I've spoken to or heard it on podcasts, for example, in conversations and maybe, maybe even seen a bit of it myself because there always is a bit of a stigma that like, you know, let's say a female photographer is asking a question on a forum, there probably is a much higher tendency for someone to think, well, this person clearly doesn't know what they're talking about. I'm going to have to over explain or kind of um, maybe shout down certain opinions in a certain way. And I think it's great what you're what you're doing with the group and it's part of the reason why I thought it would be good to get your voice out there and for more people to to find out about the group, even if it's just a few, because it is something I've been hearing of a lot lately, even though obviously for myself, I don't generally feel the effects of it personally, but because I'm in this space, I do hear about it. And I, especially in this last couple of years, I'm sure you've um, seen uh, Women with Film Wednesdays and there was... Um, Christine Bartolucci, who does the Analog Talk podcast, and a lot of people are kind of talking about this and and kind of um, yeah. sharing a similar sentiment. Look, I think through um, Instagram and and um, the different hashtags that are commonly used in the uh, in women film photographers groups um, um, community, um, I've I've linked up with different um, women from you know uh, globally. Um, yep. in the UK and the US who are leading a lot of conversations yep. um, and you know, including the analog talk. Um, there's another fl film fluke. She does um, uh, like IG lives uh, with different female photographers. Um, I, personally, I was actually quite surprised um, when I posted that Facebook um, post because I, I'm someone maybe I, it's my thick skin or maybe it's just having, um, you know, different work experience. I've always been someone that I just do it. I, I get it done. I, if I'm going to ask a question, I'm just going to say it. I don't probably overthink too much in that sense. Um, I have been, uh, I suppose it's unsolicited advice sometimes or like over explaining something um, because people assume that you might not know or you don't, you know, have that knowledge. Like, I feel like that might be a default sometimes. And it is frustrating for, for some women uh, um, to be put in that box because we're women. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. Uh, I, it, I'm sure it happens in other industries as well. Um, but as I have immersed myself in this space a lot more, I hear a lot more what people have to um, kind of have to face either through their Instagram direct messages or um, even, yeah, I've, I've heard it from any very experienced photographers in this space as well as people who are just starting exploring uh, film photography. And it's a shame to feel that way when you're just so excited about something new um, to feel like, um. I don't know where to go. So, you know, I, I'm just offering another, uh, you know, another place for, for people to, you know, share what they love. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's great. And um, at least the way I see it is that there have been some strides, like, you know, a bit of progress in that regards of whether it's inclusivity or people just kind of being a little bit more open-minded about <laughs> certain <laughs> things. But what are, the, what are the next steps? So both with the, the zine how can someone still participate if it is possible? And, you know, what's next for, for the group and our stories on film? Yeah, no, absolutely. I'd, I'd definitely love to get more people um, knowing about it and getting involved. So because it's our first scene, um, we've just started to open um, submissions uh, and the topic is identity. We're just calling for anyone, female, non-binary, um, film photographers to submit their photos and how they, uh, you know, what identity means to them and what represents their identity. Uh, we really love, you know, uh, more submissions to come through. I think it's an it's important, it's, uh, identity, I think it's, it's an important um, topic to, to start with, I think, and it, it's quite fitting. Um, we have put the submission link in our, on, on a section of the website. And 
at the moment we don't have a hard end date. We're aiming um, for the submissions to come through by the end of February, maybe like into March. Um, but, you know, we're trying to build a, a sizable uh, zine. Um, it, you know, and, and it, this is open to all levels of photography. We're not looking for technically perfect you know, shots. I think it's, you know, how you as a creator, you know, communicates that topic, the identity in the form of a, a still image. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, have you had a lot of uh, f- submission or involvement yet? And also, yeah, we- are you, sorry, um, running that all yourself? <laughs> are you in charge of the zine yourself? No, I'm very lucky um, that we've got um, a handful of us uh, as our members of the community who actually first initiated, I have um, Kelly who she's a, um, she's just graduated from um, graphics design and uh, she was super keen. She's like, let's, let's do a zine. I was like, I love it because, you know, it's very hard for just one person to run everything, I'm sure you know. Um, so I was even more encouraged when members um, of our stories on film was just super keen to to do it and get it done and would meet weekly to um, pr- make progress um, and just, yes, divide and conquer. We, we've all got different skills, we've got design, we've got uh, people who are great at social media, we've got people who are just like very creative in, in terms of like, you know, the concepts and writing and, um, so yeah, they're all amazing photographers as well. So I'm, I'm really lucky to have like a, a group of people who are so committed, um, to doing this for the community. So, yeah, you know, if we can do a second issue <laughs> or, you know, third or fourth, that'd be amazing. Um, but you know, in, in the future, I'd love to, you know, host some kind of exhibition maybe for, for people who are keen and, you know, really want to recognize, um, the work of, people who you know put in the hard work to to create yeah absolutely i think now that we're coming out of the restrictions that we've been having it could be a, a good idea for the the near future and um something in that we touched on a little bit earlier that you had mentioned was the whole uh transition between being a professional photographer and and shooting for personal work and using your work as an example what what's your take on on that and is it something you've kind of struggled with or even just thought about oh, yeah. going full time or going professional and the um the repercussions of that. Yeah, I mean, it's I always feel that that feeling of um I don't know what it is, like inadequacy, I suppose, or like kind of feeling Imposter a bit of syndrome. Fraudy. Yeah. yeah. Where when people say, Oh, so are you a photographer? And and I've I've been asked that at different points of, you know, my 10 years doing photography. And I still get the same feeling, even though I I have collected a lot more experience. Um, I've done a lot more, you know, work and I feel like my photography has improved um, over time. Um, I do, you know, think about what makes someone a professional photographer. Like when, when can you put that title on someone? When can you own, own that identity um, you know, it could be by professional experience. So time is, is tenure a way of looking at it or is it, um, you know, based on your education? Have you been taught or have you done, um, you've got a qualification in photography, which I don't have. That's probably why I feel like <laughs> an mm. imposter sometimes. Um, is it quality and consistency? You know, is it, is it someone that's just um, produced, you know, quality and consistently through through their work um maybe it's all of the above yeah yeah some people Um, use like payment as a marker the fact that they're getting paid for work even if it's small so yeah uh, is it like a full-time income a lot of things i think and it is a really tough question because i know i felt the same struggle in the beginning is um can i call myself a photographer now because i got paid to shoot that one friend's (laughs) job or whatever and then it's something that i'm sure uh, a lot of people still struggle with and um, I know I some, sometimes feel even when it's something new, like selling a zine or whatever, like, am I yeah. okay to charge people for this? You know? <laughs> yeah. And I feel like um, this, that, you know, I admit, you know, we, we are constantly seeking some kind of validation and, 
you know, whether that's, um, you know, posting things on Instagram, getting likes and shares, um, or if you take it to the next level, if, is it food work to be recognised on a um, more, you know, in this in the sense of um, awards or what do you do? You have to run an exhibit to be taken seriously. Yeah. <laughs> like so, it's so I guess those are kind of the things that I, I've thought about a lot, and I think part of that is because I've um, worked in different um, careers before. When I think back, photography is something I've done the longest, you know, since uni, right? I've had different professional careers, mm-hmm. um, different stints of it. And even, in fact, now I'm, I've, I'm full-time in, in um, a design-orientated consulting role. So I, I think for me now, when people ask me, I just, I, yeah, I, I own it. I, I, I just have come to own that um as my identity and I feel like you don't just have to have one identity right you can be a photographer and a designer you can be a photographer and whatever um you know, photographer and you know a doctor if if that's what you do so yeah. um I feel like that's really the first step in taking yourself and your work seriously um and that's a real I think that's a hard thing I like to have these conversations because I like to share that we're all probably thinking the same thing yeah. and it's okay to, you know, um, just embrace it. No one's ever going to call you out. It's just in your head that you think you feel like a fraud, but in fact, you're actually doing some amazing things and you love what you do. So, Yeah, yeah. And I think on that note, whether it's someone – like uh quote unquote calling you out or whatever or for someone to feel that sense of imposter syndrome themselves it's probably a a good thing the way i look at it because if you're really passionate about something or if you're doing something pursuing some kind of uh outlet if you're not feeling create uh imposter syndrome then you're probably not really that into it Uh, the way i feel is like you probably if you're not feeling it then it's probably not that important to you you're not even uh putting in enough hours to even warrant feeling the imposter syndrome. So that to me, when I feel it, it is a sign that I'm probably growing to a new stage in that pursuit, whether it is photography or something else. So that would be my kind of take on that for anyone who does feel that is that it's a good thing. It's a sign that you're pursuing something that you're. It is very vulnerable, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a vulnerable thing to share something you make and you're sharing that, um, you know, your creative, outlook and take your take on things and um it is a very hard thing it's a very brave thing for people to do to share their creative work um you know not just photography so i feel like creatives are some of the bravest people um that, yeah you know, well yeah it, it's it's just, tough you know and and yeah. yeah we all feel that uh because it, it is a bit of what you said is sort of like what really defines uh, you know, reaching that certain level of whether it's calling yourself professional or someone else. And out of all those elements you mentioned, such as whether it's you being paid for work or having done a certain amount of time or like um, credentials through, you know, online or whatever it is, the way I see it is it's really about your own dedication to it and how much t- maybe time would be out of all those things the the biggest thing because it's kind of like that concept of mastery, you know, like not necessarily putting in whatever it is, like 10,000 hours, whatever it is they say, towards something to reach that level of mastery. But if you're kind of like at least some percentage of the way there that you kind of think about this thing all the time, whether it's painting or photography or whatever, then that definitely is, you're, you're near that point where you can start thinking, hey, this is something really important to me and uh, it is consuming a large part of my life at least. So that time <laughs> spent thinking and doing is definitely what I see as the the first and foremost, not not credentials, not like what someone perceives is the best or the most popular, because that that's really that can come and go. It's um yeah, mm. very fleeting. I um I found this I found this quote I'm reading um Susan Sontag's book on photography, and there's this quote in there that says, "I'm always mentally photographing everything as practice," mm-hmm. and I feel like that's something i do i don't if i think it was like your conversation with patrick um, yeah that yeah. you just look at everything you you know you don't have your camera with you 
Um, but you, you, you're staring at something or you're looking for scenes, you're looking for the light, you're looking for a composition. Yeah. Um, or you're, you're just making mental notes of like, I need to come back here to take that shot because I don't yeah. have my camera with me. Well, I'm rarely without my camera. Yeah, yeah, I know <laughs> I just exactly have a bit what you of, mean. Like, FOMO. Yeah. like, what if I, uh, the, the one time I was like, you know what, I'm just having a family dinner. I don't, I don't need my camera, you know, I just need a break. And next minute, the sky was this phenomenal, like, color. It was just, it was a bit of purple, yellow, and green. And I was like, damn. Why didn't I have my camera with me? I just, I just, you know, I took it on my phone. Yeah, it'll do, it'll do the job. Um, yeah, funny yeah. that that quote was from that book because uh, I've, I've heard it mentioned and I've read that book, which I found really dry and like um, or purple, whatever the, the term is for something that's really yeah. <laughs> heavy. It's a difficult read, but yeah, I mean, it was a good book and, and that quote definitely resonates when I, when I hear it mentioned that context. Uh, yeah but yeah definitely that sense of like photographing things or, or just picturing what it would be like as a you know because for myself a lot of the people i surround myself with my partner included of photographers or creatives and maybe cinematographers part of our friend group so when we're out and we see something it's like oh what a great scene that would be you know like you <laughs> picture it in yeah. a certain composition or uh we're always commenting on maybe a scene during a movie for example like oh mm. what a great composition that is or whatever and i think your way of seeing um definitely becomes defined by this this pursuit more than anything else and uh for photographers that i know i definitely think that we gain a, a larger appreciation for the the way the world presents itself to us and you see mm. beyond the surface something i think i did mention to to patrick in that conversation yeah and i think that's probably something we need to highlight more as photographers i feel beyond technical ability and knowing how to operate a camera and all that i think it's a it's really your way of seeing that should be kind of put in the forefront um, because that's what makes you, you know, distinct from somebody else is like, I think we all have a different way of seeing the world. Um, and when I think of, you know, when I just look through my photographs and, and what I'm drawn to and yes, stories, I guess is the, is what I want to create from the images. But I think all in all, it's really, um, down to, I look for emotion. Um, so, you know, beyond taking portraits, um, I, I do, you know, I go to events and then, you know, people dancing or having a good time, that those big emotive movements, um, you know, I'm drawn to those kind of things. And also, you know, even if I'm taking a picture of um, uh, something like a lifestyle or landscape, kind of imagine, I imagine a scene from a movie and what, you know, the tones are trying to, what, what feeling does that actually um, tell me? Or, you know, it could be loneliness, could be sense of warmth or, um, you know, whimsical, you know, pinks and greens. And um, so I think, yeah, I think putting how you see the world as, as something um, more so than technical ability, I think that's really helped me kind of be a bit more bold in in the way i've presented work um because yeah at the start i'm like oh just figuring out you know it's not always the sharpest photo that gets a lot of love you know so definitely yeah that's that's awesome um thanks for for sharing your thoughts and all that i just want to kind of um wrap things up by going back to your your efforts in the community something that again kind of sparked this conversation What's um, anything else you'd like to kind of share with the audience in regards to the the direction with um, this group? Considering this video might, you know, live on on the channel for a little bit, and uh, and where people can find your work going forward. Yeah, I just think get involved. I think that's part of the fun is connecting with people. Um, you know, there's there's opportunities. I think this is. I've created the group as a way for people to connect. And I think still there's, you know, if, if you want to um, create a group in your local area um, for photo walks, you know, um, I'm in Melbourne, I, I can do it in Melbourne, but like there's people in our group and, and beyond. Um, 
And I want this to be a place where people can um, have the courage to try new things, ask more questions, connect with more people because that's that helps you grow. It helps you grow as a photographer. It helps you grow as an individual in the way you see the world. Um, but I have gotten so much from all the people I've connected with and I feel like photography isn't really just what you do. It's, it's a lifestyle. And I think it's always going to be part of who I am and what I do. So I just, yeah, really want that to that message to be spread. You know, it, it, it's a lifestyle. It's not, it's not just a, you know, a camera or, you know, um, taking a photo <laughs> and putting it up on Instagram. It's so much more than that. Yeah. And, but yeah, I think it's just down to you as an individual. So, uh, you know, a big, call to action is just get involved and it starts with just starting up a conversation you know in a group or um connecting yeah. with um, our stories of film or any group for that matter yeah. yeah so i'm looking forward to seeing uh where this goes in the future me too uh, yeah. I, I need some tips from you around um zines. start a youtube channel you, I- <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of fun you know what like yeah. i it, it has crossed my mind but i feel like there's so much effort involved in well think of it my- think of it just like another you know it's as easy as starting an instagram page whether yeah. or not you get a certain amount of people following or not it's there and you put something out and people can see it in video form content i mean i definitely enjoy youtube more than instagram and i think discord mm-hmm. was also a really fun thing that i got into recently because you can have those more personal connections compared to instagram as well but yeah no like yeah, if but- you ever have anything um you want to like chat about i'll be open to it in the future hopefully we can um reconnect at some point down the track and see how how big your group has gone and where the zine has gone and all that sort of stuff oh, i'd love to that'd be amazing um yeah it might be issue you know multiple issues by then maybe i don't know yeah <laughs> um you doing a second zine yeah yeah uh you can actually kind of see well, that's the photos from my my old zine it's probably it's blurred out in the background but i've that's kind of like my physical Instagram that I recently put up. It's like a metal board with magnets and I just kind of put prints up there. But I've started photographing something for a new zine that will replace what's up there once I start printing the 6 by 4s and um, putting that together. Amazing. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah, like you said, I definitely recommend it to anyone who hasn't done it yet. Print some work, even a cheap zine. Uh, I'm sure you'll find plenty of videos on, on YouTube about how to get started. And yeah. It's a fun process and it's not too expensive but- either. It's fun to give yourself like little assignments and little projects like that to keep you like, keep you, keep you like a, have a goal, you know, like Absolutely. It, it, whether it's, uh, you know, a collection of photos in the year and you produce just a little thing for yourself at the end of it, a little, yeah, you know, yeah. because uh, or- <laughs> it lasts a while too, because an online dopamine hit from having some likes or a photo go viral comes and goes and then you feel um, as big of a low afterwards whereas something that you keep is different <laughs> yeah no I, I love flicking through books like it's that texture it's the pages and you can always just yeah revisit i don't know I, i'm yeah. a big fan of photo books like so oh, I, i've actually watched a lot of your photo book reviews and that's where i get a lot of you know ideas and oh different. awesome yeah, thanks. It's, it's, yeah. Sometimes it's as weird, you know, the smell of a f- book, you know, kind of has a sentimental value because if it's been freshly printed and it's a certain type of ink or paper, it might reconnect to something as a kid that you've read in the library or at school or whatever. And even something as simple as that can make that experience more enjoyable, as weird as that, that might sound. But No, I, yeah. I get um My thing is about like um, different paper stocks and yeah. covers textures um the different styles of like book designs um yeah i i, I love looking at all that awesome well, like yeah all right well but thank you so much no thank you joey and uh for anyone watching where do you want to tell them to to head besides obviously we've mentioned the the discord group and your instagram which I'll put in the description of the video. Is there anything else you want to tell people about or anything you're working on? Yeah, so I think it's more of a directing people to the um, submission link to the zine as well as uh, a page I have on my website. So it's joeychan.me forward slash our stories on the film. You can basically read about um, what the group is about, what the topic 
topic is about and also um, a few details on the submission process. And, um, yeah, really looking forward to seeing everyone's um, photos for that. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you did have a separate uh, a dedicated page to that. And I think you've that's the one you sent me. I'll make sure it's the right link and we'll put it in the description of the video. And I definitely encourage anyone watching to submit something, go for it. And then if you miss this yeah. one, if you're watching this video later, uh, hopefully there'll be another one that you can revisit. So, Or if you know a fellow female photographer, like send them, <laughs> send them our way as well. Because I know, you know, if you're um if you want to help this you know if it's not something directly for you but you want to you know share the love and and share it with um female film photographers that you know um would that would be amazing as well um just to you know encourage it you know we we underestimate the value of like a a personal message you know i think sometimes we just tag people on things Mm -hmm. or um you know comment or whatever but you know sending someone a text message um um or an email personal email and that really is super because i have been on the receiving end um as well from from different people who are just like hey did you see this you should really give that a go and um to someone who might have imposter syndrome to have that encouragement it goes a long way so um um, yeah, think of people in your circles and if this is something that you think they should be in on, like that would be amazing as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, word of mouth definitely is the most powerful thing and I'll make sure I tell Sarah about it too. Maybe she'll um, submit something. For this yeah. One. All right. Well, <laughs> thanks, Ashton. Yeah, thanks again for chatting and uh, we'll hopefully talk again soon. Cool. All the best.